Morning all. Ribka 4 uh, won the recent computer chess tournaments and it was a no holds barred event in terms of hardware. Forget about um, all things being equal. Um, you were allowed to have as much hardware as you wanted. And Ribka with 260 cores was faced with a f an even more formidable monster with 800 cores called Johnny. Uh, which reminds me of Here Comes Johnny Out of the Shining uh, with Jack Nicholson. Here Comes Johnny and he's a lunatic. I don't know if the uh, the programmer of Johnny had that in mind, The Shining, but anyway. Um, so, Rubka playing black after D4 actually ventured F5 <laughs> to touch the fence, which a lot of grandmasters are not playing anymore because it perceives as a bit weakening. <laughs> but um, it's good enough to beat an 800 core machine. <laughs> okay, so G3. Knight f6, and after bishop g2, we have the Leningrad variation of the Dutch defense. So, this early Fincetto of the bishop, you know, maybe d6, queen e8, e5 later, and e4. Okay, so, um, knight f3, bishop g7. So now both sides castle, knight c3. Whoops! No, d6. Okay, so there may be the plan of knight c6, or, you know, later e5. So knight c3. Actually, white maybe has a positional threat now of d5 and knight d4. So black covered that up by playing the more subtle move, e6. So we'll be able to reply maybe with d5 by playing e5, or even consider taking. So queen c2. Okay. Johnny's position looks fine and, and natural. You know, maybe white's preparing e4, um, or later, you know, to Fincetta the bishop. Okay, it looks okay. Knight c6, rook d1. Maybe this is all book anyway. Both both computers might be in book. Cheating, in inverted commas, with their books. <laughs> okay. So, queen e7. And now a3. So, thematic stuff, you know, on the queen side. Looks like a, a normal sort of human game so far. You know, a5 clamping down on b4. You know, like, like I did on the weekend. Clamp down on white's queen side. Bishop e3. Okay, maybe this looks a bit artificial, but the bishop might actually be useful for d5 and knight d4. There. So I don't think knight g4 um, is that effective. Maybe, you know, bishop d2, or maybe even back to c1. Okay, so knight d8 was played anyway. And now a really artificial looking move, which, which does sort of betray that white might have been an engine user, otherwise the game looked kind of human like so far but this this looks a bit odd what what is done with the rook it's like you know why you know rook a2 a strange looking move funny enough i've been reading a, ch a chapter out of uh, Ralston's um uh, you know play like a zebra you know um you know become a zebra chess player and um he he was talking about these uh, computer games with these weird looking moves and when Kasparov was faced uh, played a computer in one game the computer played knight h5 and got you know crushed but um the programmer had asserted you know get used to unusual looking moves like that you know that's that's going to show the way forward for for things but um it's funny you know we, so we, we've got this move rook a2 but how is it actually um that exploitable and I, I think there is something, uh, a great simplification, which I'm going to spell out here, which is also mentioned in the chess base comments for this game. <laughs> and um, basically, it's exploitable because of the king. Um, now, you might think, you know, why is rook a2 exploitable because of the king? Well, we're about to see very soon. But, um, basically... King safety to be weak. A king, you know, either has weaknesses around it, or you can have a lot of pressure. Like all these guys, imagine if they were ganging up on the king. Yeah. So maybe you know, just you need a few weaknesses if all of these guys were involved. What if this black rook was involved as well in that attack? So I think the key here is inviting all the pieces to the attack, to the attacking party. How on earth would you invite this rook to the attack of the white king? So this is how to beat an 800 core engine. <laughs> okay, so b6. b6 is also challenging this guy to try and swap off this guy to weaken these light squares. So that's one guy that you want in the party, to just to take out this defender. 
Okay, so knight g5, let's take out that defender first. Bishop b7. Okay, so mission accomplished here because bishop takes b7, knight takes b7. The 800 core machine is a little bit oblivious. All that's happened is a little transaction here on the diagonal. The transaction has resulted in these squares being a bit weaker. But how would you get these guys into the party? Can Ribka with 260 cores overcome his, its opponent with 800 cores here? Well, now there's a slight weakening move around the white king position, h3. So yes, it weakens a bit the support of g3, doesn't it? Which maybe in turn weakens the support of f4 which might you know, prompt e5 to be slightly more effective. It all ripples like that. So we've got a rippling effect. We've got light squares that are weak, and we've got dark squares that are slightly weak, we would say, if that's color-coding white's king position. But how do you get these guys into the attacking party? Now, these guys, you know, usually thematically, e5 and f4, would strike quite well in the Dutch defence because you've already got your f pawn as a battering ram for f4 anyway. Now, this is a total stroke of genius. Even if it was, you know, between two humans, this is just total genius. But it's calculated genius. It's reinforced by totally concrete evidence that this is actually effective. But the principle, the basic principle, is amusingly, I think, very, very simple. That you want to get this rook into the attack. Okay. And this next move is designed for that, a4. And I've given away this arrow. Look, this rook can glide now along the fifth rank, potentially, to try and get to the, to the white king position. So knight takes a4. The 800 core monster sees no concern here. But the subtle things have already happened here. The light squares are weaker. The dark squares are weaker. And now we've got an entry point for this guy to come into the attacking party. Okay. So let's start striking now for e5 and for f4. How do we do that? Knight h5. Immediately, you know, f4 is imminent. Okay. There's no f4 because the knight takes g3. So it seems white is waiting for the f4 strike. But to add more punch than that, e5 first. Okay, so that f4, the bishop's going to be forced back, you know, maybe rip open the f file. D takes, bishop takes e5, keeping solid on the d file. Now look, white's, white's not in a position to really exploit d5 either. If the knight had been on, on c3, then, then that this weakness would be more quickly exploitable. Knight f3, okay, but now we strike f4. So that diagonal is being pierced. That h3 move, you know, seemed a bit passive. So g takes, bishop takes f4 check. Has black got enough punch? Basically, if it was just these guys, he'd be in trouble. This knight's a bit away from the picture. It will take quite a few moves to come into the attack. But this guy's ready to run. Make a note of that. Bishop takes f4, knight takes f4. So immediate frets here. Okay, well the pawn, pawn's been attacked here. Um, what else? You know, maybe there's knight h3s, maybe there's a subtle threat of queen e6 and queen h3 and queen g2 mate. What else? There's a few implications of that. It's a nice knight outpost on the same out file. Black has pressure, black has prospects. Knight c3 defending e2, getting the knight back. Maybe e4 is going to be useful now. Queen e4 or knight e4 to g3. Okay. So queen e6 immediately striking h3, knight g1, and now we see the whole point of that a4 positional sack. Rook a5, so a deadly threat now of rook h5, deadly and concrete. Okay, so queen e4, so the knight coming back also you know, means the queen's um, hitting e6 and, G and b7 materialistically. Ripka doesn't care about the knight on b7. It's a useful distraction now. So just fl flings in rook a5, rook e5. Ripka might have been, you know, there's Meshnikov, an electronic version <laughs> of this Meshnikov. So queen takes b7. So now these guys are left to attack the white king. Is it enough? Well, rook h5, immediate threat. Rook takes h3, and then potentially swinging this rook in for the kill because it's not going to be enough to try and mate on g2 because that queen is eyeing g2 at the moment. Queen e4 
and now we have that combinatory idea. Rook takes h3 check. Now queen takes h3, and now the rook swings in for the final knockout blow with rook g5 check. So white is now forced into desperate measures. This first one, rook d5, if it wasn't for this knight on d on f4, then then this this wouldn't this would be a big problem for Black's attack. But Black's got knight takes d5 here, renewing the threat, the simple threat of rook g5 mating. So now the 800 call machine realizes basically it has to give up material. It's busted. Check, check. It has to give up the queen to stave off mate, like the old classical computers used to do desperately. You know, give away as, as many pieces as possible just to maximize the time to get mated. But unfortunately, you know, at this level, they're getting a bit more sophisticated now. They they resign. They they are able to resign. So queen d2, and actually White's realized its chips are cooked. <laughs> Sorry, I just made that up now. That's good, isn't it? But rook a1, there's queen takes b2. Full game for these guys. If the knight moves, then queen e2. It's it's total disaster. What a game. Let's have a look at it from the beginning then. The Dutch defence of all systems, creating you know theoretical weaknesses. But Black plays it in a very you know, nice, thematic way. Beautiful a4. This is a new idea. This is all good stuff. Weaken the white king position and swing the queen's rook in with the decisive effect. Once these dark squares are pierced, then combine a dark square and light square attack, making use of the queen's rook switching in from a8, sacking the b7 knight as a decoy for the white queen to gain a bit of acceleration for the attack. It's beautiful stuff, all I guess precisely calculated by Rook running on 260 cores, of which I believe are i7s by the way. So, um, wonderful game. Comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.